Let me start with a story. Um, I always like to do that. When I was, I think I was first in college, and I, um, my parents really couldn't afford to send me to college. Uh, so, but you could get loans in those days that were really very low interest, and so I got one of those. And then I had to figure out how to do things like books and all this, and, uh, and my parents contributed what they could, but I understood I was going to work. So I already played music, but this was before serious music. This was kind of like you know, folk music and blues and rock and roll, that kind of stuff. So I had a job working at the radio station uh, where I would just come and kind of play and then play some songs, mostly folk stuff my guitar and it was a nice way to make the money I needed to buy books and things like that. And I met a lot of the other musicians and at that time uh, sort of folk rock was evolving. And uh, I also had been friends with my best friend Barry who had a very broad musical taste and his <coughs> girlfriend I've mentioned, if you've never heard her, which many of you probably haven't, you should listen to her. Her name was Laura Nero, and uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful writer and singer. And you know what she is? I've, I've definitely heard of her. Mm -hmm. So she was a very, she just combined so many elements of music. And I remember one time we went out to Roslyn, which was near the school uh, in Long Island, and this one guy was talking, and I thought he was a little crazy, he was a musician, but he was talking about starting to use things in rock music like trombones, trumpets, the most unlikely combinations you could think of. But after I listened to him for a while, I got completely inspired. He had this great vision and Laura, who after my friend Barry was her boyfriend, got famous and then she went out with the lead singer of a band called Blood, Sweat and Tears, <laughs> who, who did this, who actually mm -hmm. did this. Mm -hmm. And so I met a few people like that when I was young. They just were so creative and they influenced me. And I realized after a while that to be creative, all you had to do was be creative. You know, it wasn't like a, some magic thing. You, if you were willing to branch out and think creatively, you would get more creative, and sometimes your creations would be great, and sometimes they wouldn't. But that happened to Picasso too. You know? So I'm very, I've been thinking about that, and I feel like this is the right time and place uh, for <coughs> us to be creative. And um, I was talking to someone about. Uh, various teachers of various kind, now they're all teaching differently. And that's because we've arrived on a new shore. And it'll take about 500 years or so, or maybe 200, to sort out what this kind of teaching looks like. But for me, the old model works very well, uh, the old Japanese model works very well too, which is that um, in Japan, say, when Zen was uh, dominant, Kamakura, it influenced everything in society. It influenced all the arts, the military arts, social work. And I don't see why, and I say this over and over again, we need to put things in such separate categories. Why shouldn't the practice that we do in Lost Coin be totally inclusive? Something that you've heard me say very much is I don't even really like to identify with the fourth way or Buddhism because I'd rather identify with a club that everybody can join. I don't like separate clubs. Separate clubs cause a lot of destruction, even murder. Uh, certainly bad feelings at least. But, and we don't want things. So what, what we're doing now is I want, uh, I want us to move and I 
I hope so many people in Europe and across the country who will, who will look at this other blog, talk to me about it. I want us to work more collabor collaboratively, if you like. Like in the blog that we do, anybody can make an entry into the blog. Uh, Tawny is sort of our content person, but she can umbrella it or look at it if she wishes or whatever. But <clears throat> why? what I'm trying to do, in a way, is to create a culture. I, I, we got that essay for all of you to read, which I think will be very interesting. Uh, I'll talk about that later. Um, and why shouldn't something that is uh, a spiritual or a developmental path be include many other things? It has in the past. Now, when I studied with a foundation group, the Gurdjie Foundation group, there was a certain culture there, and that culture was European intellectual. Uh, most of the people, many were in the publishing business, or writers. Uh, James Wyckoff, who was my first contact, was an author. And then, uh, when I first studied Zen, uh, uh, there was a different culture, a uh, culture that referred to the arts, and, and, but also to the land, and, uh, many things like that. So, what is our culture? Well, it's going to evolve, and I, I want to encourage you all to contribute to it uh, in any way that you like. But if the basic <coughs> tenet, for example, of spiritual practice is to be one with, then it seems to me that the thing you want to be one with is life here now, and whatever that may be. And it's different than what life was. Life here and now is science and technology and art and business. And you may not have uh, an interest in all those areas, but as a group, we can pull all of that together.